Hey, and thanks for checking out this Equinix demo. In this video, we're going to take a look at using the Equinix Metal SDK in order to codify and provide bespoke binaries to deploy Equinix resources. So before we look at the code, why don't we discuss why you would take this approach over other approaches we've seen in other videos, such as using the API Terraform or Terraform CDK or even the Metal CLI. Well, the SDK gives you the ability to codify anything that you want. You can then compile that into a binary and distribute it across your team or organization. This gives you the power to allow people that are not familiar with infrastructure as code APIs to provision opinionated stacks based on how you consume the SDK. For instance, Let's assume you want your developers to be able to spin up their own bespoke development environment on Metal. They don't need to know that it runs Ubuntu, that it runs on a C3 medium, and that it's provisioned with a handful of software that you've selected to make their lives easier. Using the SDK, you can even build in extension points, allowing them to provide a simple command line argument or configuration file of extra software they want on their machine. They can then run your binary and voila, job done. Let's take a look at this with a simple and easy to understand example. Here I have an SDK directory. Inside this directory, we have some files needed to work and produce a Go binary, notably a go.mod and a main.go. If we pop over to the code, we can see that this is 50 lines easy to understand Go code that we're going to go through now. In order to consume the SDK, we just have to reference it in our import statement, pulling it in from Equinix, Equinix-SDK-Go. Specifically, we're pulling in the Metal service because we're going to deploy Metal resources. Now, we're going to continue using ambient authentication as you may have seen in other videos. And that just means we provide the metal off token environment variable and the binary can absorb that at runtime. We use this environment variable to create a new API client available as the API client variable. Now, in order to show you this working right off the bat, I put together just enough code for us to do a capacity check. This means we don't need to hang around waiting for any bare metal to be provisioned. In order to create or in order to perform a capacity check, we need to know the metro, the plan, and the quantity of devices that we want to run the check against. Well, these are hard coded right now. We can modify this code to pull them from environment variables or even command line flags or a config file. We then put together a structure that we can pass into our capacity check API call. Assuming we don't get any errors, we're just going to dump this out as YAML to the terminal. And I'm also going to do one more thing because I think it opens up a very interesting use case for working with the SDK over alternative tools. Because this is code and we can program anything that we want within our capability, we could do notifications to Slack, Discord, PagerDuty, or anything else. You can use this to chain and trigger other remediation and automation pipelines. Now, well, this example here is just going to send a GET request to an arbitrary HTTP endpoint. Let your imagination run wild a little bit. What would you execute every time a developer consumed your bespoke platform binary? And that's it. That's the code. Why don't we try it? To get started, we can do go run main.go. And there is our YAML response, telling us that C3 small is not available at a quantity of two inside the London Metro. Now, this is expected because we don't actually have C3 smalls available in London. So let's go to our code and change this Amsterdam. We run it again 
and within a few seconds, you get availability true within the Amsterdam Metro. Now, we're still hard coding these values as I make changes and run in the Go binary directory. But let's assume that we wanted to build this main.go and call it platform. We now have this platform binary where when we execute the code or when we change the code, the binary isn't updated without us doing a rebuild. So we need to add a little bit more smarts to our code. Let's do that now. Now, the purpose of this video is not to teach you how to do command line arguments or process JSON files with Go. Instead, we just want to open up your imagination to the things you can do with the SDK. Now that I've got my excuses in, we're going to modify this code with as little effort as possible to make it more dynamic when we ship the binary. To the point, I'm going to copy the way that we grab the authentication token with OS get env. And we're just going to drop this in for each of our variables, making them dynamic, not in the best possible way, but, but dynamic nonetheless. We'll now call this Equinix Metro, Equinix Plan, and Equinix Quantity. Now we just need to ensure that these are always set. If we end up in a position where metro equals a blank value, we're going to set the value of metro to London. We can then do this for plan and quantity. Like so. We can then build our binary and run. Now we haven't provided these environment variables yet, so we should see an availability failure for C3 smalls within London. Perfect. So let's try setting Equinix Metro to Amsterdam and running our platform command. and we get availability true. Now, again, to reiterate, I don't expect you to use environment variables as a way to configure your platform binary or whatever you decide to build with the Equinix SDK. But we have the ability with code to make our application and our binary dynamic. So use that. Okay, so if we go back to our code, there was this thing down the bottom that we mentioned at the start. We can build pipelines for remediation and automation or notifications by hooking up webhooks or other APIs to our binary to understand how people consume and use the things that we provide within our teams and organizations. We've been sending a GET request to an RBOX, which is just an HTTP bin style thing, for all of the commands that we have run so far. So if we come back here and we hit refresh, we'll see that we now have seven requests that hit our HTTP endpoint. We have our availability true, which is the most recent one for the Amsterdam C3 small. We have the false in London, the true for two in Amsterdam, and so forth. While it's such a simple step to take when using the SDK, the flexibility and possibilities of what you can do once you have this described as code and a binary that you control, well, there's a lot of fun to be had there for sure. So that was a short but hopefully sweet introduction to the Equinix SDK. We take a look at producing a binary we can share that allows people to do capacity checks dynamically based on environment variables that they provide. We hook that up to our infrastructure through a simple webhook. So go forth, build on Equinix SDK, and be sure to let us know what you built. We're always curious to hear. Until next time, have a great day.